Hey guys, what's up? I'm Eric with www.paravenum.com. That's Latin for prepare the wine. Go to our website, check us out. We got a lot of new stuff up on the website, so make sure you go and check it out. Today we're talking about Super Tuscans. What are they? Uh, what kind of food do you eat with them? And where do you buy them? How much are they? And But more importantly, what's the story behind Super Tuscans and what are they? So uh, if you get on the internet and you look up Super Tuscans, you're just going to get bombarded with these really long words and a lot of politics. And it's really not going to be that fun and interesting. So what I'm going to do is tell you the real story behind Super Tuscans and how it got its name and why it's so cool and why you should go to your local wine shop and try to find one and buy one. Today's Super Tuscan that we're going to be trying, uh, that we're going to be tasting, and one that's really exciting to me that I've had lately, is uh, Poderio Sapayo. Uh, and this is one of, uh, one of the wines from uh, the importer uh, Baco Selections, which is owned by this guy named Paolo Pelizzari. Uh, and he's right here out of North Carolina. Actually, he's in Southern Pines. I got this at the Triangle Wine Shop during one of his tastings. The guy is awesome. He's brilliant. He's from Italy. And what he's doing is he's taking boutique wines from Italy that aren't mass produced, that aren't mass imported in the United States, that these are farmers that have their family name on the wine and that are serving some of the top wines in Italy, but they just don't make enough to where they're going to just import a whole bunch over here to the United States. And what, what Paolo is doing is he's taking these boutique wines that he loves from Italy, bringing them here, putting them into the local wine shops so that you have a chance to taste something that was made by uh, you know a real family. And, and all the wines on his selection, just all the families have like a, a really good story and they're really exciting wines. So I got some great Brunello de Montevolcanos and some Super Tuscans and everything else. So, uh, but this one was one I was really impressed with. I was also really impressed with its price. So we're going to talk about Super Tuscans today so that we can drink this wine on this show. Uh, Super Tuscans, uh, the story of the Super Tuscans is really exciting. It's really cool. It's one of the most fun stories in wine that I think. Uh, and how, here's how it starts. It starts in 1792 with a guy named Leopoldo uh, della Rochetta. And... In the uh, 1840s, he gets some kind of disease and it, and it debilitates him and he can't work and he can't really do anything. But instead of just being a lazy bum, what he does is he starts studying uh, viticulture and agriculture and he starts bringing vines over from France and growing them in Italy. Two different types of uh, uh, terroir, different types of soil and, and climate and the whole nine yards. And he's trying it, something big for him. And so he's growing these uh, Bordeaux style uh, vines in Italy and he's keeping notes, so like real good notes on these wines. Well, I mean on these, uh, on these vines. Well, he dies, and he, he dies in the late 1800s. He lives a very long life. And when he dies in the 1800s, the vines die with him. So sad. But his notes survive. Yay, there's hope. So then World War I kicks off, and his great-grandson, Mario, fights in World War I. Mario and Chisa della Rochetta. He fights as a cavalry member on a horse, gets out of the military, uh, World War I, unscathed from the war. He brings his horse with him, and he gets into, he doesn't know what else to do. He's like, well, you know, I rode horses in the war. Now I'm going to study uh, equestrian things and, and raise horses and breed horses. And that's what he does. And he does it awesome. He breeds one of the fastest racehorses, one of the most famous racehorses ever. And it came from Italy. So famous that Italy named a race after the Ricetta family. And it's a very famous uh, horse race. Well, after he retires from the equestrian stuff, he moves to Bulgari, which is in Tuscany. And he starts dabbling with his great granddad's uh, notes and says, hey, you know what? I love French wines. I'm really tired of Chianti wines. And I like the big, bold flavors of French wine. So why can't I grow French wine, French vines here and make my own wine here instead of having to buy it all the way from France? So he does that. He starts growing his own vines in Italy, in Tuscany, in these Bordeaux-style Cabernet, Petit Verdo, Merlot, rather than just the standard uh, Sangiovese and uh, Malvese and all these other grapes that are uh, grown in, in Italy. He starts growing these French, French grapes. And so uh, he grows and he just makes wine for his own, for his own family and his, his own uh, consumption. And ends up that, uh, you know, years down the road, these wines are very fabulous and people start wanting them. So now he's got these, this great table wine that he's made for himself that everybody wants. So he takes this wine, these, these French style wines grown in Italy, made in Italy by Italians, and he sends them over to France for these competitions. And they just start blowing all the French wines out of out of the water and people are like, man, what is this? This, this is wine from Tuscany. These are, these are Bordeaux style blends from Tuscany. This is amazing. And the great Robert Parker says, man, this Tuscan wine is super, it's super Tuscan. Well, here's where the story gets interesting. In Italy, you have three wine, back then you only had three wine uh, ways 
to value wine and and their government put these stamps on there and I'm not going to go through the whole names of all these because they're really long and I don't want energy out. but this is what you need to know when you're buying Italian wines you have DOCG and DOCG is your highest rated your highest quality I wouldn't say highest rated but your highest quality wines and they meet the highest mark of the highest standard in Italy DOCG then you have DOC which they meet the a little bit of a lower standard um, and then you have just your table wine and your table wine, really what's that saying is that, is that those grapes can really come from anywhere. Uh, they can come from any part of Italy and it can be kind of all mashed together. It doesn't matter how much of what grapes in there. They're just called, it's just table wine. And then DOCG, DOC is, you have to, it has to be aged for a certain amount of time. The wines have to come from a certain uh, region and, and they can't be so far from the center of this and they can't be so much of an altitude. And DOCG is even more strict. That's all you need to know about that. DOCG being the best, table wine being the lowest. Well, Super, super Tuscans are gonna change that whole wine rating, that whole uh, value system uh, changing completely so in the 70s everybody wants to try these super Tuscan wines but the government in Italy says no we're not these, these are table wines you can only classify them as table wines because they don't meet these standards of DOC and DOCG and you're growing grapes that are from vines from France and that's just not how we, we do things here we're Sangiovese people we're not this you know Cab Merlot Syrah we're, we don't we're not doing that these are table wines but they're so popular and so amazing that people want them. And uh, the old Ricetta family is like, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna put table wine on our wines. We're gonna call them Super Tuscans because that's what they are. So they just started calling their wines Super Tuscans. Well, around the world, Super Tuscans were sought out and they got so popular and they were so expensive that finally by the 90s, Italy decides we need to have another standard. We're gonna name it IGT. So still very high standard, but uh, it's still a standard, but they're not table wines. They're not DOCG wines, it's IGT. It's a whole different kind of value system, which is really exciting and cool in the 90s. So now they don't have to just put uh, table wine on their wines or anything like that. Then, I think it was like in 94, they actually started saying that, hey, you can go ahead and use DOCG and DOC for your Super Tuscan wines. Well, most of the people that are making Super Tuscans are already rebels because they're already growing uh, crazy grapes and, 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 and uh, making their own blends the way that they want to do. And they're like, no, 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 no. We don't want to be called DOC or DOCG. We want to stick with Super Tuscan. We'll stick with our IGT. We fought for, you know, we own the, we own the label. But some, uh, some Tuscan wines say DOC now, some say IGT, but they were, they're all super Tuscans, okay? So um, <clears throat> without further ado, let's go ahead and taste the Podere Sapio, or Sapio, sorry, I'm not Italian. Actually, that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm always afraid of Italian wines and doing videos on Italian wines is because I butcher the names completely. So, but um, my wife speaks French, so French wines are easy because I can get her to pronounce them. You know, Spanish wines, I don't know if Spanish should get me to the Donkey Show in Tijuana, so I can kind of figure those out. Um, obviously, American wines, I can definitely figure those names out, but Italy sometimes throws me for a loop. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and taste the uh, Poderi Sapayo uh, from Bulgari. Italy. Uh, so this is the 2011, and it's going to be a. Uh, I, I think it was it was Cabernet, Petit Verdo, um, and Syrah. But don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. I know that its average is about 90 points uh, when you start looking at it if you're if you're into the point rating system. These are 90 point wines. I think it runs. I think this wine runs close to $50. It's it's going to be in that 40 to $50 price range. Well, well worth it though. Um, this isn't the first time I've had this wine. I had it at the tasting and this is like my third bottle of it, so. This color is going to be, it's going to be a dark ruby red color. On the nose, it's, you're definitely going to obviously get that, that perfumey, um, that's what Italian wines usually smell like it, to me. It's a very floral perfume, perfume. And you can always tell, I can always tell an Italian wine just because, because it smells like perfume. I get a little bit of chocolate in there. And for red fruits, I smell strawberries. Maybe strawberries and blueberries. Maybe a little hint of mint. And definitely this, that, that just, just that floral perfume smell. So, the tannins are medium. It's, it's just it's a very fantastic wine. Uh, the tannins really are covering the mouth right now. It has a very lengthy finish, I would say. And on the nose, it's on the palate, you know, you can almost taste like rose petals. I'm getting rose petals, a little bit of blueberry, a lot of strawberry. 
uh, and just a lot of earth and dirt, just that, that hard, rusty, dirty, kind of leathery taste that, uh, that you often get from Italy. But the perfume on it is so nice. That strawberry and that blueberry is very vibrant. And it gives you a lot to talk about, a lot to think about. Uh, if you're going to go out and spend $30 on a bottle of wine, $40, bottles on, $40 for a bottle of wine, I think this uh, Sapayo really, really, really meets that, uh, that mark. And it's well worth it. I would pay more for it. I think it's a fantastic bottle. I want to show you the lineup that I have here and why I did it. This is a Tiganello. Tiganello was the first Super Tuscans that, that ever came out. You can find Tiganellos on the shelf. They're going to be about the $100 price range. But uh, if you kind of look at it, it'll just say IGT Toscana. So this is a $100 bottle. This is a $30 bottle, but you'll notice that this one has uh, DOC. It doesn't have the DOCG. It just says DOC. Uh, and, and it's about $30. But then I have right over here is like a $9 bottle of wine. And you will see that it is also IGT. So this $100 bottle of wine is IGT. And this uh, $8 bottle of wine, I think this was like $8, $7. Uh, it also says IGT, so you don't ever have to go on whether it says IGT or DOC on whether you're going to buy the bottle or not. It, that doesn't really, it's not going to reflect the price uh, so much. But um, so when you're, when you're going out, it's best to go to your local wine shop, go to, uh, you know, um, the Triangle Wine Company, talk to these guys, tell them what you want. Tell them you want to try a Super Tuscan, you're looking for it, they're going to put you in the price range that you want. If you only got eight bucks to spend on one, go ahead and try it out. But really, if you're going to really want to see what, what a Super Tuscan is, definitely try this Sapayo out. This is a fantastic bottle of wine. Um, all the Baco selections uh, are amazing. And uh, another fun fact before we go, Baco, uh, Bacchus, I guess is how you, how you said it in, in, uh, in the Greek language, he was actually the god of wine. It means uh, I don't know, peace and happiness or joy or something like that. But anyway, Baco Selections, you can kind of remember that because it's the, uh, the god of wine. Um, so thank you, Paulo, for uh, turning me on to this uh, Poder Sapayo. This is definitely going to go in my uh, repertoire. It's uh, one of those bottles of wines where if I'm in a pinch, I'm, I'm going to go for it because I trust it and I know it, and it's a very great bottle of wine. Well, guys, until next time, www.paravenum.com. Check us out. Have a good night. Go Duke for the tournament tomorrow. See you next time.